welcome to The Platform, highlighting creative Jamaican culture. I'm Shanique. And my name is Tanil. And today we're at the Kingston 10 Sports Bar and Grill. Today we're here with Tabita Shea. The top girl. Hey. Thanks for being here with us today. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Hot. <laughs> really hot. <laughs> yes. It's really good having you. Um, Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm kind of an easygoing person, you know. Fun to be around, as you can see. Yeah, but I'm mostly um, a natural kind of girl, laid back. I like shopping, I like music, and that's just me in a nutshell. So you're a Kingstonian girl? No, East Rose St. Andrew, Ills girl. East Rose, where, where exactly is that? Them. Back Papin. You know about Garden me? Town where? Yes. Okay. okay. So you yeah, have Ruban in thing there. Yes man. Only but <laughs> ills. So when did you first get in um get interested in doing music? When did you realize you had a love for or passion for music? Well, it was a while back. A friend of mine gave me a CD. I used to write poetry. Poetry, I love poems. I used to write a lot of poetry. And then one day he brought us he gave me a CD and said, put a song on it. I said, I don't know what you're talking about. Wait, wait, how do you put a song? You know, how do you create a song? And he was like, I hear you sing, just listen and just put a song on it. So I said, all right, cool. I have a lot of poems, why not? So I started slurring the poems, and then one of them turned into a song, and that was my first song. And we did a collab, actually. Um, I need your love today, don't you ever stray. I need your love today, baby, don't you ever go away. Yeah, me and Drago. That was umpteen years ago. <laughs> yeah, what was that song? I need your love. I need your love. Yeah, and the first time I heard my voice on track, that was it. So what was that experience like? First time recording in a studio, hearing yourself live. Listen man, I'm gonna feel powerful. <laughs> when I hear my vocals, I was like, no, I don't mean that. I can't mean that. And I think every young artist have the same experience. Like when they when they hear their, their vocals for the first time, they're yeah. like, you know, them fall in love. I think that's what they really fall in love with. You know, it's like a drug. All right. So, where where do you draw your inspiration from? Um, everyday life. Everyday. Yeah, but recently I kind of recently I kind of learned how to get creative. Like, it doesn't have to be everyday life. It can be some. It can be. It can be something that I make up in my head. Yeah. Because I, I have a very vivid imagination. Yeah, man. So, <laughs> so I can write. Stories. You know, so I just imagine some, something and just put it together and it always works. And it works. <laughs> it, it always works. Always works, trust me. So who are some of the producers you've worked with so far and labels? Well, I've worked with Homer Harris, that's Jump Style Records. I've worked with Bobby Digital. I work Whoa. with Sly and Robbie. I work with um, yeah, top girl for true. Top girl. <laughs> <laughs> I work with a lot of you know prominent producers in the mm -hmm. industry. Right now I'm working with DJ Diamond, so a lot of See new there? stuff coming out. See That's there? very good. Mm -hmm. All right, so you told me about inspiration and everything, but I want to know artists. Mm -hmm. Who do you draw your inspiration from in terms of the artists? Well, back when I was doing reggae music. Oh, you I used reggae? To, yeah, I started out as a reggae artist. Well, actually, I started out as an R&B. <laughs> it was always name? starts from R&B. Girl, you don't what want was, to know no, the name. No, what was your R&B? It, it wasn't hot, girl, you know. No, it what was, was your R&B? Listen, name? you really want to know about that? Listen, listen, I had to shuffle names. I walked around studio to studio, <laughs> and I had names in the bag, and I shuffled it, and whichever one they pick, I just used it. But back, back then, my name... <laughs> My name was oh, yeah, Apple yeah. Glitter. <laughs> you wasn't a top girl. <laughs> you were a top girl. No, it was Apple, because Apple is my alias, you know, from mm -hmm. growing up. And then I, I, I had the little glittery things to it, so I used to wear a lot of glitter on my skin, and then I call myself Apple Glitter. Wow. So I was trying. I was trying, you know, uh, you know, yeah. And how would you describe your music based on who you draw your inspiration from? Well, my inspiration back then was drawn from JC Lodge. So it was mostly lovers rock reggae. Oh, I love music. to love. So I'm a love, lovers rock. You know, I'm 
I'm a pro at it, if I should say so myself. I'm a, trust me, I'm a pro at Lover's Rock, you know? And um, she was my biggest inspiration because, I don't know, there was something about her vocals yes. that kind of yes. gets you, Amazing. you know? Yes. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and I think the fiery side of me was Sizzler Kalonji. <laughs> Anyway, because I really and truly started doing music from Judgment Yeah, so he was like my icon. What you know, was it? I idolized him. What was that like? In uh, a Judgment Yeah? Yeah, like, I mean... Rasta. <laughs> Pure Rasta. I loved it. You know, because they, they treat you like a princess. You know, you're well respected. Yeah, yeah, the Empress. Yeah. You feel like you belong. Mm -hmm. Somebody always scared of dance all, you know? Because I, people used to talk about dance hall, the dance hall, you know, the dance hall scene and yeah. how it's rough, terrible, and you have to be, you know. But I know the kind of have a rough side to me, so whenever I was ready to take it on, you know, you'd have been I'd, ready for it. Yeah. All right, so tell me about some collaborations now that you've done. Collaborations. Well, as you know, my biggest collaboration was Spartan Angels with Tommy. They had a big scene. Yeah. That's the biggest one? <laughs> yes, that's my biggest collaboration. And I did one with Elephant Man recently. Mm -hmm. yeah, Take your time. Mm -hmm. Take your time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a few. But those are the biggest ones so, so far. So piece at the time in you know? Yeah, Make them know what you Hearts and angels, I believe. You are my savior in my time of need. Sparts and angels, tell me why. Clouds of darkness are up in the sky. I see the angels, he lead them to your door. There's no escape now, no mercy no more. Spot a macho, now you see danger. <laughs> Everybody auto tune, you know. people they think I auto tune, you know. Yes. A lot of people thought your that. voice is amazing. So, oh, I had to holy. sing my heart out that night, man. <laughs> it was no auto tune, trust me. What was that experience like? How did that collaboration come around? Um, come about? All right, so I used to, I used to power on every but it wasn't anything musical. You know, it was just okay. like, you know, we were friends, and but he knew I could sing, so. He was man I didn't even know he was managing Tommy at the time, you know? And then one night he called and said, I have a hook for you to sing. And this is the key that I want you to sing it in. And when him send the key, go and give me a message. <laughs> so what you know now? I said, I don't know other key I got going on, but I'm going to sing the hell out of it. You mad? I can't pass up that opportunity. No. No. So I would make you sing it. Me say your man, me can't. Me say him call me. Me say your man. Yeah, man, I have that lock, man. I <laughs> come up on the phone. I'm like fretting. I'm like, yo, this key is dangerous. So how did you prepare for that? I didn't prepare. I just went and I did it. I was a little bit nervous, mm -hmm. but this is me. Anytime I go into a studio and I feel nervous, I know I'm gonna kill it. Okay. You know, so I mean, it wasn't even something to nervous. prepare for. It was just because I, I, I know tones, so I know how it's supposed mm -hmm. to sound. So, and it came out real, real good. Yes. Real good. Yes, it did. You know? All right, so we're going to go current now. Mm -hmm. Tell me about what can we expect from you, like in the next six months or so, even though we're going through a <laughs> pandemic. Oh my God. But yeah, what can we expect? Um, I don't even know what to expect. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to say this I'm doing some um, mostly dance hall now. I kind of, you know. Okay. Yeah, yeah, leave the R and B and, and like, yeah, kind of give it a break a little bit, maybe long term. But you know, dance hall, dance hall is what gave back to me. So I thought that I needed to give back to the dance hall scene. Oh, I've been doing reggae for years, and I haven't seen any results. Let me be real. Oh. A lot of people would, would debate when they hear me say that, and it's just the truth. No, it you is know? the truth. Dance hall has showed me more than what reggae has ever showed me. You know, so but decided to say lately, all right, top girl something, I got to some dance hall. Since you're speaking about dance hall, mm -hmm. you know, there's some, there some stigma attached to females oh, oh. in dance hall. Because you have to sing about, I'm to say it straight up, you have to sing about your vagina, mm -hmm. your body jumping, all of them good things there. All right, not necessarily. Well, what not, makes you different 
in that scene? What are you bringing that's different from everybody singing about them parts? Well, I sing about my parts too. Sure. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I can't even say hey. Because what is dancehall? Dancehall raw. is raw. Yeah. Dancehall is dancehall is branch it's raw that's what mm -hmm. dancehall is you can't smooth it off you can't true. replace it with another genre you can't try to you can't try to nice it up a lot of people would say oh the dancehall them nowadays them too dirty that's too, what yeah. dancehall is that's why that's it's dancehall you know it's not reggae if you want to hear nice music go and listen, listen to reggae, reggae music all right that's you understand that's, that's fair and i understand if them say okay i want to listen to some dancehall but i don't really want to hear they you know, it's fine. You can smooth it off. Do a clean version. But for some reason, yeah. they always go to the dirty version. I don't know why. Because it's Dance, stronger, you know? It it's is. So, you feel more but when you go the, to the raw version. So, would you say <laughs> but here, that dancehall is for downtown? Dancehall was created downtown. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't say it's for downtown because, you see, the uptown people, them. I love it, man. I like to use this word, this, this, they're sex, can I say sex? Yes. yes. Sex hypocrites. <laughs> so guess what? They don't want to do it in public, but in private, them better than the downtown. Wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> they're, them better than the downtown. They own that. You don't want to have them create it. You understand? So I wouldn't say it's for, it was created downtown, you know? downtown but it, it it has widespread it take over the world but you know the funny thing when you think about the the history mm -hmm. of jamaican music skia came from downtown that was studio one yeah rock steady reggae that's where everything emerged from so you see i think i think it's the i think it's the look on the nicey nicey people them it would have come in like you create something. It would, it, all right. It would be like you create the platform, uh -huh. and then it's a down to earth kind of vibe, down to earth, you know, program. And then you have a uptown person that comes in, likes what they see, but they want to smooth it off. All right. You understand? But it doesn't work that way because it's not going to be the same vibe. See, you're going to lose. It would have come like a restaurant. You change your taste, you lose your customers. You understand? Because that's what they're coming for. Exactly. So if me go dance, me want your dance hall, me no want. Me no can play reggae, but that's what me come there for when two o'clock, all of the little broke out, broke out something. Like Bubble your body. Yeah, yeah, you understand? Yeah. So that is what people that's come to enjoy themselves. That's true. When you want to let your hair down, you go to the dance hall. Everybody knows that. That's agreed, true. agreed. You know? Agreed. So dance hall is, dance hall is, is free music. Dance hall is, Dance all are poor people music. Meaning, you can relate. You would be singing, and I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm talking from experience. You, you could have sing till you're weak. Your voice could have nice till you're weak. Them not look in a reggae unless you have grass. And yes, it's true, me no plan for us. <laughs> <laughs> this is true, me no plan for us no time soon. Unless me apart with, um, you hey. know, <laughs> might change my mind. <laughs> but, them just have to understand that it, it is what it is. You understand what I'm saying? It so it it's is. just accept it for what it is. Yeah. That's what Don't it try is. to change it. And I think that's what they're trying to do. And then when they realize they can't change it, they're trying to stop it or limit it. Yeah, yeah they're definitely trying know? to limit it. I know yeah. the funny thing is on the international market, they don't want anything more to do. It's huge. It's big. Yeah, man. They love it. You man. know, you they have people. It. big. In, you have Airbnbs in Trench Town. Not because it's just where Bob Marley came from. Mm -hmm. It's how he lived. It's the yeah. culture. So they don't want to look at what they don't the want thing. that. They don't want that. You know? They don't really want it. You know what I mean? And dance art brings difference to the genres. All of the big genres, them anything them can do anything what they want to say anything what they want to say. But dance art is the real deal. It's the real me. If a person, if a per, it's like when you reach home and you let your hair down. That's yeah. dance hall. Yeah, that is true. You know, that and dance hall gives back to young artists, artists overall. Unlike reggae music, where listen, if you don't have a big song, no, I'm sorry for you. And that's just the the sad reality of it. It is the sad reality. So, and I'm not sending. I'm not all right because you have a lot of people who grow up 
on reggae music mm-hmm. like artists so you know they love reggae music and they, they really don't they're not thinking of going on the dance hall scene mm-hmm. there is hope sweetheart you know that's your taste and you can make it work for you yeah, man, make it but work for me too. a woman at, for men it's maybe it may be easier but for for a woman when was the last time separate and apart from coffee when was the last time you saw a woman come out of reggae music the last person was etana etana who yes. came after her long time etana was when long. but one good 10 years ago long yes time. precisely who came after her i care they do her thing one at a time and then kind of you know sugar oh. sugar was there too but i don't know <laughs> i wouldn't s- maybe i wouldn't say there but you know what i mean like they're like a etana. That yeah. is true. That were really that is true. A stamp, stamp. You know what I mean? Like people come and go. You're gonna have the fillers in the industry. You're gonna have the top tiers. You understand? Etana is a top tier. Who mm-hmm. came after Etana? Which woman come after Etana? I don't like I reckon. Mm. Precisely. You're not because lying. what? And it's very unfair. No, there's politics in everything, especially for women. You know, but guess what? I'm glad me have one little man in me. Where? Yeah, for tough. What you say? Rough. Yeah, for, yeah, for Listen, rough. me tell. I tell every female artist. Don't come in this with expectations to be treated like a woman. Oh Lord, Because if you're treated like a woman, you're gonna have to do a lot of things that a woman should be doing. See, yeah. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Let me, me know. personally, I like when I'm treated like a man. So rough. I'm rough right. and I'm fierce. And I want to be treated that way. You can't talk to me like one of you charge them. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I want to talk to me nice because the moment they start talking to me nice, yeah, like me, I want me, I want woman, things that go come after that and true. Me not really depend on something there. What things? Things. What things? <laughs> what things? <laughs> you know, things. <laughs> you understand? I'm not really about that. Mm-hmm. So, you, that's why you maybe not hear about Tamiza bigger than what she's supposed to be. You know, like because they're closed. Oh yes, they are. Mm. And the head is right here. All right. So you're not gonna hear about Tabitha that much, unless we really meet somebody like a real person in music. We just know that Tabitha I work where I work, mm-hmm. and when they pass certain things, yeah. and the money we make. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, or you have to be smart and know for just go around it. Because after being in it for so many years, you have to learn one and two street smart as a woman. You can't just go. You can't just go. It's a male dominant fraternity. What are you going to just go in the regular stuff? No. You have to fierce. You have to fierce. I mean, I'm no pushover. I'm not easily pushed over. That is, when the people I'm saying, I know. See what I'm going. Because you have somebody out there, where you know? <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. I rest this right here. What was your most memorable experience? Performance wise? <coughs> Reggae Sunfest. What year? 2013. That's that's the, the Spartan Angels. Spartan Angels. Oh, oh. When they, yeah. yeah, man. So, where did we wear? Where, where did we wear? Tell me about the outfit. That outfit, oh my god. Um, I don't even know what it was. <laughs> <laughs> it, was it was like, um, it was leather. It was dropped. Cause you know me, I go for the Spartan angel, the whole angel yeah. thing. But it was like a demon angel. <laughs> so it was like full black leather. I think hair was cut out. It was like short hair. And then he had a drop, and then the boots yeah. came mm-hmm. out. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So I go full gothic the night day. You know. Yeah. Step out on the crowd of mud. What you say? Mm-hmm. But it was. It was. <laughs> Listen, it was it was scary, but it was fun. Scary fun, more scary than fun, you know, because it was my first time being on a big stage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know how Jamaican yeah, crowd is, mm-hmm. but they loved the song and they didn't really know who sang it. Mm-hmm. A lot of people still don't know who sang that song, you know. So when I step up on the stage and the, and the track started, because. Maybe for a lot of people who aren't singing, Spartan Angel would know that that track is very difficult to drop on. Like it don't start on the regular four bar. You have to like catch it in between the four and the five. So if you don't catch it, you're going to drop off. You have to catch it. You understand? Mm-hmm. So when I step up on the stage, the people them is like, them, they, they know the song and them just listen for ear if she going to sound the same way. Mm-hmm. Yes. 
Trust so the, me, yes. listen, when I stepped up on the stage, I was hoping that they would make some noise so I wouldn't be that scared. <laughs> and it, I, I could drop a pin. I said, Jesus you Christ. You have to sing. I said, I'm an old man. I said, oh God, people, you know, I'm not going to be able to hear you. No one didn't want to hear you. I shut up here and support my crack. No one didn't want to hear you. I said, I said, I'm afraid. I was saying, oh my God, support my crack. It was my first big performance with it, you know? And when I opened my mouth, I realized I was, I was getting timid. And then when I get timid on stage, my vocals get low. And then when I realized I'm a vocal, I get low and the people in my pay attention, I'm like, hell nah. Uh -oh. I took all that fear and I pushed. And I got best cameo that year. Best performance. And another question I want to ask, because performing on a track is mm -hmm. different from performing at a live band yeah and you know some face it's live yeah band mm -hmm. what was that like what was the rehearsal like leading up because you know say you have to hear the song well for me it wasn't that hard because they they had run the, the track like sampled it mm -hmm. through the so it was playing back the same way they, they couldn't play it oh oh no they it's couldn't one of those. they couldn't was they couldn't play that back they just wouldn't get it so they had to some run it through the um the keyboard mm -hmm. so they played the sample mm -hmm. yeah they couldn't get that back that bad. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't get that back sounds like a overwhelming experience but uh it was it was good overwhelming overwhelmingly good overwhelming. what words of encouragement or inspiration you might have for young females yeah, i suppose me one jumping in there <laughs> Yeah, the one who, dance what you expect. Dancer? Culture, you know? Suppose me, you are be an artist and everything. Now, where you going to tell me? So? Dance all already. Dancer. You're not going to go in no, look. that your style. <laughs> you no, know, I'm just going to change up my hair and everything. <laughs> no, I'm just checking. Are you going to go in with that no, image? You can't change it up, man. The image can't Oh, you can't change, change it up? You can't up. adjust. Oh, you, okay. Yeah, man. And well, that's another question. How important is image? Girl, <laughs> listen. Image is more important than performance for women. So that's true. You true. could be on a stage singing crap, and as long as you look good, you're good. You're good. Yeah. You understand? For men, they do, them just draw on a shirt or a pants, so you know you have to bring yeah. the performance. <laughs> but um, image is very important. All right. So, top girl, tell me something now. How hard has it been to to find a song to top? The color, the Spartan Angels Spartan color. Angels. Well, it hasn't been hard. We actually did have a follow-up called Broken Wings. You True? know that wasn't, yeah, it wasn't released. Everybody's been asking for Broken Wings. No for like man, release years. it, man. What we want here? <laughs> want to hear more? Yeah, it, you know, Broken Wings. Broken Wings. Broken Wings. All right. Yeah, broken Wings. But um, of course, I have a lot of songs that can match up the Spartan Angels. But here's the thing promotion is yeah key. you see i think the position that i was in the company that i was in if i released a song you would have heard it to that magnitude okay you understand so because i'm not really there anymore you know okay i understand yeah kind of do my thing so you maybe not gonna really hear. I have songs. I have oh, a lot of songs up there. But you maybe not hear it, you know, big like a Spartan Angel, like yeah. the promotion or the people that was behind it. Mm -hmm. But I have, a, I, have a, I have crazy songs. And they're not regular songs. Before they're voice, hits but, you know. <laughs> and potential hits. <clears throat> yeah. Trust me, I have a lot of songs you guys have. Tell us about some new projects. Everybody want one. New projects. Yeah. Top Gala comes. So well, um, I recently released a song, on, well, two songs actually on the same rhythm, True Reminder Rhythm. It's produced by ZJ Diamond. Mm -hmm. Private Party, which is a raunchy vibe, you know, for the dance hall scene. The name, you know. And then you have Gratitude for the, you know, the nice, <laughs> the nice people. <laughs> so, yeah, I like to cater for both crowds, two different money. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Um, those are the two recent releases. I have a collab coming up with Blacker, 
Oh my god. So yeah, I do have that one coming up also. But right now I'm focusing on private party and gratitude. Yeah. Private party. All right. yeah, so guys, check out private, private party, party on so. Tabita Shea's Instagram. What's, What's your Instagram? Instagram? It's Tabita Shea underscore top. Yeah. Hey, she's not even so it's T A B E T A C S H A E. I might just change it to Tabita alone because I know everybody can spell this shit. You know. So <laughs> spell you know, the shit for them it's too. C-S- it's C S H A E. So that's Tabita Shea underscore. The top girl. Yeah. And your YouTube. We have a YouTube. Everything is Tabita Shea. Okay. Everything is Tabita Shea. Okay. Yeah. It was right. our pleasure having you on the first yes. episode of the platform. Thank you so much for having me. You're most Are welcome. Are you start this soon? <laughs> yes. All right. We just have one Top last gap. question. Yes. iPhone or Android? iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, Airdrops. until next time, please no. follow us on our social oh media, Twitter, the In- platform JA, Instagram, the platform JA, and you'll see us on YouTube, but we're on the Solid Music Group on YouTube. So until next time, bye! Let's up, y'all. Peace out.